we've got an update right now on the Turkey earthquake. This morning, devastating situation there in that country. Tragically, at least 2,300 lives have been taken by this a historic earthquake for this region. Yeah, this is one of the strongest earthquakes in this part of the world in over 100 years. The aftershocks have been severe. One reached magnitude 7.5. Geophysicist and research professor at Columbia Climate School, Michael Steckler, joins us right now. Michael, talk a little bit about the geology here. This part of the world in Turkey, they do have fault lines, but this is looking to be a particularly deadly situation. Yes, this was along the East Anatolian Fault. So what's happening is that um, Arabia is moving to the north and colliding with, with Turkey, and Turkey is moving out to the east along uh, two fault lines, the North Anatolian Fault, which gave us... Oh, we're just gave us a series of um, earthquakes in 1999 along that and a lot of other earthquakes during the 20th century. And this is along the, the southern branch, the East Anatolian Fault, where um, it's actually a, a very large earthquake for this type. Uh, this is a, a strike slip um, event similar to the San Andreas Fault, mm. um, and 7.8 is fairly large for a, a, a strike-slip event. So, as you mentioned, this is an area that regularly sees earthquakes, at least in some regularity. What makes this earthquake stand out, the intensity of this one? Um, I think for, um, it ruptured on the order of a uh, hundred and, and 20 kilometers, um, so about 80 miles of the of the fault. And what stands out for me is that um, most uh, strike slip earthquakes are relatively shallow, and this one, the epicenter was was 18 kilometers, so about 10 miles down. And that means that the area that that broke in the fault and moved in the fault um, was larger than for um, most strike slip earthquakes. And it looks like there were two, at least two major quakes, unless those are related aftershocks, it looks like there were two major that were over seven on the scale. Um, are the rest of those just considered aftershocks or was there one center and then everything is considered aftershock? The, those are, those would be considered aftershocks. Okay. Um, and, and they will continue to be aftershocks. Um, that will slowly decrease in, in, in size over probably several months. We do have some early alert systems in place on the, on the west coast of the United States. Is there anything like that in this part of the country? Was there any sign that a quake like this could have been imminent? Um, I, I don't know of any early warning system. I know there's been a lot of focus certainly on the, on the hazard for Istanbul, which is what I've been more involved in. And uh, this earthquake, um, I think, less so. Um, and it did happen, and of course, in the middle of the night, um, which is another difficult situation. Um, how about the infrastructure there? What we're seeing from some of the video coming in, it looks like a lot of concrete buildings and certainly not, not the infrastructure that you would have, say, on the West Coast and uh, along places like right. California's fault lines. Right. And because this area hasn't had a, a large earthquake for probably a couple of hundred years, people were not constructing to earthquake standards. And that kind of um, rectangular um, reinforced concrete building is very susceptible to the side to side shaking that happens in an earthquake. Um, well, you know, looking there are ways. Looking at this uh, situation, looks like it will be a, uh, an evolving story that will continue to follow. We appreciate you taking the time here with us on Fox Weather. Geo physicist and research professor at Columbia Climate School. Best of luck with your research, Michael Steckler. Thanks for your time. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.